Hi, I'm Lassie and I'm teaching people in metal shaping and um, we are back here with on YouTube again with more stuff to make. And it's no limitations what you, what you actually can make with sheet metal. So I think outside the box and on this video, it's a hot rod part that we're going to make. Um, but you can use the principle for other stuff too. So this will help you to even make other stuff. Just think about what I'm doing and the process and stuff like that, and you can make other stuff. So this is a 32 Roadster dashboard, same that I have on my Roadster. So I'm going to make this one. And um, so when I start making something like this, the first thing I do is to do the layout. And the layout, I already have marked it out. <coughs> So 20 millimeter from the bottom because that's the, going to be the flange. And then I mark this up, the, 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 the bead here, where that's going to be, and how far in from the edge. So that is already marked out, and I, that's what I'm going to start with. So in this case, I'm, as I said, I'm going to start full depth here and then go to this mark with the dies. And when I get here, I'm going to uh, lose up the pressure and fade it out to zero, both, both of those. That's what it looks like. After that, I'm going to bend the flange. And because this is an, an, an outer curve, an inner curve, and an inner curve there, I need to shrink and stretch that one after I have bent the flange. And after I bent the flange, I need to do the bottom of the bead here. And then after that, I need to adjust the shrinking and the stretching a little again because it changed a little bit. And after that, it's just to roll the top part here with the rubber band in the English wheel and the roundest wheel. And then we are done. So let's start the process. So this is the die combination that I'm using in the bead roller. And this is two dies that normally don't, they are not the pair. It's one from one pair and another one from another pair, and that's what I'm going to use. And this is a little critical, so I don't want to do this in several passes. And I set that bead there, the, the groove there, in the center of that blue line. And crank it down all the way down. Now I feel a resistant, and then I back off a quarter of a turn more, like that, okay? I need to go slow here now so I can have control over what I'm doing. And always stand on the side as it goes in. You see how slow I can go and I can, I can do small, small steps like this. Pretty soon here I'm going to go into the straight part and I keep this blue line 90 degrees to the machine. And then I go there, like that. And I hold this with one hand now and when we get to that mark, I'm start loosening this up a little bit. So I need to do the same thing on the other one, the line. I, I, I faded out, didn't fade it out quick enough, so I went a little too far there. But that's okay if I do the same thing on the other one. Same thing here again, crank it down all the way until this, I feel a resistant there, and then I'll open it up a quarter of a turn more. And of course I need to use the other pedal.
And I went a little further on this one as well. I was a little, little off the line there, but if I clean this off, I don't think anybody can, can see that when you see both sides. But practice makes you better and better and better. So that's what the first step to do. The next step is to bend this flange. So I'm going to change the dies in the bead roller. Okay, I changed the dies to two flat ones, two narrow flat ones, and then a bigger one here, and that's the same as the flame dies. And I'm going to use this edge as a guide. So I'm going to set the machine. So I turn this down, move this in, and set that in the center of that scribe there. And then I lock the machine, lock the shaft, because I can move the shaft in and out on my machine. Now, I'm going to flip this upside down because I want to make sure that I'm bending the flange this way. So here is an easy thing because I marked it 20 millimeter there on the outside. I should have done it on the inside, but when I did this layout with the template for that, then I had this 20 millimeter there. Uh, here is also an uh, important thing is that if you use no pressure between the sheet metal, if you just have it light like that, so you almost have a little gap up and down, then it will easily be a radius on the bottom. So I'm going to use it a little more radius and it's going to make the bead a little, little more crisp. This is such a long piece so I can actually And I focus on that point all the time when I'm feeding it in there. If it's right that goes in there, it's going to be right that comes out. If it's wrong there, it's going to be wrong that comes out. So now you see when I did this right, it's actually pretty crisp there, and that's what I want. And many times in my, my classes when the student is making this 32 dash, they either bending it too quick up, or going uphill or downhill. Most of the time, uphill, and it's, it's screwing up this edge here so it's not crisp. And because it's an inner curve and an outer curve and an inner curve, it is a little difficult to hold it. But the key is to keep the same angle here, whatever that panel here have, is, you need to keep that same angle there all the time. So if I'm trying to, if I try to bend it too quick, it will be a radius down there instead of a crisp corner. And then it will be difficult to do the next one. I adjusted the pressure a little, little more to because then I give me a little increase, or a little uh, crease in there, so it's actually a little more crisp. It helps me to have it a little more crisp. And I can see on the outside here too that it's, it's, it has a little radius to it, but that is okay if it's not more than that. So I probably need to go two times more.
I think I can leave it for now. Um, but you see now how this looks like. This should be flat. And that has to do with an inner curve, two inner curves, and an outer curve. It was cut in, in two inner curves and one outer curve. And that makes this uh, thing. But I need to shrink it so it's flat to the table. And you see this one. Put the tape measure here between there so it's the same height, so this is in level. And now you see that this rocking here and this need, air flange need to be shrunk. And here I need to stretch it because it's curving this way. So I need to work on, on the whole length actually, except for the last part on, on both ends. So let's go over to the small shrinker and stretch and work on this. So when I'm using the, the shrink and the stretch, I must remember that I can't go all the way into the jaws because then I'm going to make the whole thing shorter. I need to be in maybe half of this width of this flange or three quarter of this flange, but not all the way in. Then I'm going to have, then I'm going to screw up the panel. So I'm, I'm starting light here. And it's better to do it twice than, than too much. But you can already see here that two spots here that the shrinker took bite a little too much. So I need to go and, and stretch those part out there. Light, 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 stretching it out. And that's the good part with the stretcher or shrinking the stretcher because you can you can regret. Now I think that part here is pretty much straight, but here I have an inner curve, so I need to stretch that there. And I need to stretch this part here as well. I need to shrink it just a little bit there because I have a little puckle there. To get rid of that puckle there, I go in with a light pressure, but I go all the way in with the jaws just to get rid of that. So now let's put this on the table again now and see where we are. 